Today, we're going to talk about uh, cloud computing and the three big providers of uh, cloud computing, which is AWS, GCP, and uh, Azure. Specifically, we're going to uh, talk about an overview of what is cloud computing. Then we're going to talk about Gartner's magic quadrant. Then what are the criteria that goes into the magic quadrant to give them um, a position in each of these um, different quadrants? Then we'll uh, do a quick overview of AWS, GCP, and uh, Azure. So why don't we get started? Firstly, cloud computing is the practice of using remote servers to store, use, and manage data and applications. And um, at a high level, you know, the advantages of cloud computing is that it's on demand. It's um, very reliable. It supports the software as a service model very well. It is uh, highly cost effective and uh, it has advantages of scalability. So here's Gartner's magic quadrant. And as you can see, the leaders in this quadrant are uh, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google's GCP, and niche players. So, uh, you know, based on the completeness of vision and the ability to execute, are Alibaba Cloud, Oracle, IBM, and Tencent Cloud. And what gives them these specific scores is here. So firstly, uh, you know, are they a public cloud? Do they have infrastructure as a service and platform as a service offerings? So, and base, and do they have basic, um, you know, infrastructure as a service as well? So for example, do they have compute storage and networking resources as a service? Do they have high security standards? What kind of service level agreements do they have? Do they have software marketplaces? Do they have enterprise class support with 24 seven customer service? And do they have managed and professional services? Now let's talk about um, the biggest player in the space, right? Which is uh, AWS or Amazon Web Services. So one, some of the advantages that um, AWS has is that it's the market leader. It's very strong on vertical integration. So you could almost completely build an entire application uh, with services that are completely available on uh, AWS without having to go elsewhere. And it's a very mature business with good margins. So it makes very high contribution to the Amazon bottom line. Now there are some uh, complaints that folks have with regard to AWS and one is its uh, lack of open source contribution. So the open source uh, community um, relies on uh, contributions from uh, different different users, and you know, while it provides framework uh, frameworks and and software for uh, for free, it also expects contributions. In AWS, I think there have been concerns from the open source community as to why um, or you know how they are not contributing as much as the value that they take back from uh, open source. And then I think the other concern has been poor cohesion across multiple offerings. And uh, sometimes there have been concerns about how AWS could, could offer the same service, but in uh, in different forms. And users sometimes would not know, hey, which is the best service for me to use among the five different database options that uh, AWS provides. Now, uh, here's, uh, here's an overview of AWS from a geographical standpoint. So they have, uh, you know, 24 uh, regions and each region has multiple availability zones. They have three uh, announced regions as of October, 2020, 77 availability uh, zones, two local zones, five wavelength zones. And then, um, you know, they have a lot more regions than uh, their competitors. They are in 245 countries and territories they have 97 direct connect locations and 220, over 220 points of presence and over 210 edge locations and 12 regional edge caches. So I think, um, you know, like we discussed, it's, um, it's a, a very robust network in terms of actually having infrastructure in, in different places. And that's been, that's been traditionally one of the biggest strengths of uh, AWS as, um, as a cloud service. Now moving on to Google Cloud. Now some of the some of the positives of Google Cloud is that uh, it, it's 
it gives, unlike AWS, it, it provides a lot back into the open source uh, community. So for example, Kubernetes and you know TensorFlow and all of this are, um, are actually uh, Google and Google Cloud's contribution back into the open source uh, community. Then it has very strong uh, data focus. So uh, they're considered the leader in data science, AI and machine learning uh, in terms of the services they provide. And even as a company, I think they're considered um, one of uh, one of the best in terms of um, uh, their strength in uh, AI and uh, machine learning as well. And then they have um, strong, you know, multi-cloud or hybrid cloud support with Anthos and uh, Kubernetes. Now, when it comes to the downsides of uh, Google Cloud, one of the biggest complaints that uh, a lot of customers would have about Google Cloud, which Google is making very conscious efforts to change uh, based on their hiring strategy. If you look at LinkedIn and stuff like that, is that they don't have very good enterprise uh, support. And uh, that's something that Google's really working on based on a lot of customer feedback. And uh, the other concern is outages. There have been sometimes um, outages that may have been uh, you know affecting customers and and stuff like that which also i think based on their infrastructure exp expansion they are they are working on like you know a couple of days before i recorded this video uh, in december of 2020 uh, i think google services were out for uh, maybe an hour or so so there have been concerns like that um, in terms of um, in terms of locations i think here's how uh, Google Cloud is. Uh, so you can see geographically, they have about 24 regions, 73 zones, 144 edge locations, and are present in over 200 countries and territories. And, um, you know, you can see the map here as to how, how they are. And we just dive a little deeper into uh, their network as well. And um, as you can see on your screen now, here's um, how Google Cloud's uh, infrastructure in terms of, um, you know, the cables that uh, that they have already invested and, um, you know, future, um, future investments to ensure that uh, they have a very robust um, cloud uh, cloud network and you can see how how it is in terms of what's their uh, edges and uh, you know and the current network that they have and their future network as well so moving on to uh, azure now and i think one of the biggest uh, positives that uh, azure has is the enterprise support experience so uh, you know microsoft i think one of the biggest strengths of microsoft has been their uh, enterprise uh, enterprise support. And I think Azure kind of carries that DNA with it, the Microsoft uh, enterprise support DNA with it, which, which is really helping my, uh, Azure as, um, uh, as a service. And uh, I think they also have strong mindshare given existing client relationships through other Microsoft products. So for example, most of you listening to this would probably uh, be using Office 365 or um, or Outlook, and you know, and a lot of you would probably be using some of um, uh, you know one of Word or Excel or PowerPoint or something like that, which is which is again you know Microsoft, which is again Microsoft products. So they already have great uh, relationships with a lot of large organizations, and all they would have to do is you know upsell their cloud service and which is, which is again a big positive for Microsoft. Now there have been complaints about Microsoft and um, one of um, the biggest complaints that a lot of customers have said about this is the low availability zone to region ratio. So I think that's been a constant uh, thorn in the flesh of uh, Azure as, as a service. And uh, there have been uh, sometimes customers who are just not happy with you know, there's no capacity guarantee. We cannot guarantee that this is the capacity that we can we can provide. And uh, for some organizations that are not looking to buy other Microsoft uh, products and only cloud, you know, support can be expensive. So I think that's been another complaint that a lot of uh, customers of just Azure and not the rest of Microsoft or Microsoft as a family have have uh, said. And here's here's again, you know, Microsoft as um, Microsoft Azure as um, um, as a cloud provider, their their presence and uh, you know future uh, availability zones as well. So you can see they're kind of widespread through the globe, and they're also looking to expand their um, service 
uh, with uh, with Azure. So with that, I I'm going to uh, stop, and I hope uh, this was uh, this was useful. And if you have any uh, feedback, I would request you to uh, leave it in the comments. Thank